Solo, a Star Wars story, apparently in 3D. <laughs> now, before I get to the 3D, uh, I first watched this flat off of Disney Plus, and I noticed after the enjoyable opening, I struggled to pay attention until about the midpoint of the movie. On my recent second watch on the 3D Blu-ray, I felt this may have been caused by this campfire scene early in the movie. Although there was nothing terrible about the scene, I think it acted as a speed bump that took a while for the movie to recover from. And yet, by comparison, it was a small moment followed by a long action scene. So I found it very curious that it would have such a lingering effect. Now, I'm hardly the first to say this, but this doesn't feel like a movie about Han Solo in any way. But I do like the main character, the person they are calling Han, actually felt a lot more like a young Luke, sort of a natural cry in his voice that makes me imagine someone naive, insecure, but eager and willing. And I liked going on an adventure with this wide-eyed go-getter. Now, I could tell that there is stereo information in many of these shots, um often as consistent as other Star Wars movies, but 3D is afraid of the dark, and this movie exists in the shadows. It's actually very weird how dark they managed to make this movie. It is the most dimly lit of all the Disney Star Wars movies. Even in daylight, the characters are often in shadows, and the mind naturally wants bright things close and dark things far. So when the background is far brighter than everything else, the 3D is at a disadvantage. And I've really begun to appreciate that for 3D to really work, it needs to begin before the conversion with the cinematography decisions. And there are styles that fit it like a glove and others that work completely against it. Now, given that the movie is so dark, you would think that they'd try and make up for it by turning every establishing shot and CGI action into as wide an experience as possible. But no, it's quite the opposite. Uh, now, here's an exception, <laughs> an appreciated exception. But it's similar to Rogue One. The CGI shots are nearly flat. Uh, see, you see anything in this shot? <laughs> there, there is a little, but it's a little. And that background is completely flat. It's just being moved uh, back and forth. Uh, although this flyby is quite nice. But that space cloud, which looks like it would be amazing in 3D, is otherwise given so little 3D detail that even if you pause the movie and stare at it, you can hardly notice its shape. Now... As mentioned, I kept forgetting this was supposed to be a Han Solo movie, so the frequent throwbacks to various symbols of actual Han Solo uh, I started to take on an almost satirical feel. At a certain point, I started to think of this as the old comedy Life of Brian, which takes place during the uh, time of Jesus, and the lead, Brian, gets mistaken as a Masonic leader. And his followers uh, keep insisting... Uh, that he's uh, their leader despite his best attempts to dissuade them. So here it just felt like they kept saying, this is Han, it's Han. And it's like, well, no, not even close to being Han. But yes, it is. <laughs> no, it isn't. And, and it just started to feel silly. Um, but whoever he is, is still enjoyable. Uh, the only drawback to this uh, imposter syndrome is I'd enjoy seeing where this character could have went in Star Wars land. If this was just a Joe somebody, it would have made an excellent seed for a Star Wars TV show. It already ties into the established Clone Wars um, cartoon. And, well, you know, maybe it still would work. I suppose you could argue that maybe Han was once this bright-eyed, hopeful kid who later had the idealism uh, beat out of him. And uh, I guess if such an episode could be made to show the transition, it would be powerful. Um, in a way, they've kind of already did that with uh, Ahsoka's arc in The Clone Wars. Uh, that character in Season 1 is far different than how she ended up later. Uh, though it would be a tricky thing to write. I've heard it said you can tell who a person is will be at when they're 30 when you see them when they're 5. We seem to have some programming in our hearts that doesn't really change. It can stretch, but like an elastic band, bounces right back once the pressure let up. 
we are more accustomed to seeing people failing to change. That's the normal. But then again, we don't want the movie to see the normal. We want the impossible journey. So I'd be interested to see if they could pull that off.